Hey guys, welcome back to the Pixelmon mod. Now I know you're probably wondering why the hell I haven't recorded anything else recently, and that's pretty much entirely because I really haven't felt like recording anything else recently. I haven't like really went mining since last time either, but no, it's fine. Let's just do what we like to do and just catch Pokemon, and have fun basically. Because you know what, I'm pretty much having more fun with this series right now than everything else, and because of that, I kind of just want to keep playing this series till. I start to get a little bit tired of it. And right now, I'm still going strong with this series, so... Yeah, why not record it? But yeah, that's basically the entire reason why I haven't done more Skyrim or... Final Fantasy VII, anyway. Cube World's a bit of a different story. With that game, I'm more or less waiting for them to add more content before I go back to it, because... It's not that the game is bad or anything, but the content they have now is, uh... Limited, to say the least. So I'd like to wait till they get something more in what they do have. But for now, I just want to see if I can kill this Graveler and maybe level up a little bit. I guess that works. Rock Slide, that's actually a pretty strong move. Um, 75 power. That looks stronger than Mud Slap, I'll give it that much. As much as Mud Slap's bailed me out before, I don't think I'm going to need it from this point on. However, I'm going to need a Pokemon Center because self-destruct is a dick move. Really is. Why does it sound like something's dying outside? Sounds like a Mareep is killing itself. Oh boy. <coughs> That'll be interesting to find. Where are you killing yourself now? Okay, I'm not sure if it was you or if it was something else, but something was clearly killing itself, which is kind of hilarious. Yes, Either way, we gotta go find stuff to kill so we can train level up. I guess what we could do is go to a jungle and start catching some jungle Pokemon. Since, you know, aside from like my first session, I don't think I spent a lot of time in a jungle. So it'd be a nice little change of setting for one. I can remember which direction the jungle was in. I can't remember if I had to cross the desert or if it was across this mountain biome. I'm sure it's one of those two. And yeah, there was no way I was making that jump. Well, maybe on my way there I'll find, like, I don't know, a few bosses. Well, I'll probably find more than a few bosses, but whatever. Pidgey. Who knows, maybe I'll even find the Moltres going through this mountain. Granted, I seriously doubt it, because I still to this day have not found, like, any of the legendary birds legitimately. Whatever. Okay, floating ride on is clearly on a cliff. That's a hell of a cliff, actually. Okay, we have another snow biome over there. Not to get confused with the current one. Yeah, it's kind of a cool mountain structure, but not what I'm looking for. And there's clearly a Charmander over here. Yep, Charmander. Level 14, not really good to borrow of him. Well, we're being... Except it's all we're being, it's just a cave. Okay, well the jungle's clearly not in this direction. So I guess we're going this way. Now is a boss Pidgey, and now it's raining. That is fantastic. Well, I suppose I'll take out this boss Pidgey. Oh, Jesus Christ, don't go down there. Now when you drop your shim, you have to go down there and find it. No, that's fine. I'm going to level up my Trachini off this. If I can hit. The hitboxes on Pidgeys are kind of broken. As you can probably tell. I can't hit this thing for shit because its hitbox is stupid. That's literally the reason. No, I'm not making that up. Its hitbox is literally the dumbest thing ever. Fuck it, I'm going down. You, you seriously can't hit this thing. It's even worse when it's flying. There we go. You have to, like, hit below it and towards the back. That's where its hitbox is. 
It's like that shadow behind it. It's not actually the Pidgey. That's why it's so freaking dumb. Either way, I've got to swap out now. Swap out for Magnemite. It should be able to survive whatever attack. So I can Thunder Wave. Now it's probably just best to Sonic Boom it to death. Because I don't want to see this thing's going to be slow enough that's going to let me. Except it's going to use Whirlwind like a dick bag. Yeah, this thing is a dick bag. Why would you know a bunch of really dick moves? I'm going to try one Thunder Wave of Tratini. It's probably going to end badly. That's right. And those dragon type moves, it's just stupid. Last well, KO Dragon Rage, so you'll die twice as fast, and hopefully, before you can use anything stupid. Yeah, it's dead. Tratini's leveled up. Charmeleon's leveled up. There's a TM down there I might want to grab. It's all good. Assuming I can get down there. A ton of Zubat down here. I think it dropped three things. So I have to get up and out. Right. Okay, please place. Okay, we're good. And there's a Clefairy up here now. Well, what did we get? We got, uh, yeah, a bunch of lids and incinerate. That's a new one. I can check what that does later. For now, I'm not really planning on using any TMs for stars because uh, my Pokemon are kind of low level, so I'd rather them learn basically their full potential and moves before I start teaching them stuff. Because I don't need to overcompensate yet. At least not yet. Like, yeah, I know my Dratini's pretty weak, and my Aerodactyl could probably use a couple stronger moves, but it will learn moves in time, trust me. They really will. Honestly, what I've been kind of hoping for that I haven't found yet would be, like, those uh, level training items, like Macho Braces and stuff. Those would be pretty good. Yes, I am creating my own parkour course here. Probably not my brightest idea ever, but screw it, I'm here. And we have a ride on over there. <coughs> uh, not sure if I'm going to fight that thing. We do have a ride horn over here. <coughs> That's actually a pretty big ride horn. I might want to fight that. Honestly, before it fights me, that would be preferable. I'm just going to swap out because it'll be stupid to try and take down with what I have. Yeah, you would stomp. I really hope Water Pulse doesn't one-hit him. I don't think it will. Of course it will! My weakest water move kills him. Oh, God. Just too damn strong. Too damn strong for my own good. I would prefer to catch a Rhyhorn before going straight to ride on. But whatever. So I guess the desert was the right way to go in this situation. Because I know there's a jungle out somewhere. I just couldn't remember exactly where. I'm pretty sure that if we keep going this way, we'll eventually ride into it. Right, I'm saying this without actually knowing. Wow, that is a giant magmar. Is that a boss magmar? I think it is. Well, its health bar is in its head, so I can't really tell, but I am 90% sure it's a boss magmar. Would you like to fight my Dratini, boss magmar? Oh, that is a boss magmar. That's, um... Bad things are gonna happen, aren't they? Aqua Tail, because it's your strongest. 
and it barely does anything. Water Pulse to try and confuse it, just to prolong your life. Well, he's confused you, which is the opposite of what should have happened. Oh god, that, that did a lot of damage. Well, fuck it, YOLO. Yeah. I thought it would happen. Okay, oh, my best bet right now would be to try and Thunder Wave before this thing dies. Okay. And all you're going to be able to do is Sonic Boom it till you die. So just keep Sonic Booming. Maybe you'll be able to take it out. I don't know. I seriously doubt it because one lava plume and you're screwed. Or Confused Ray. That's another thing I'll screw you. I like how I got poisoned even though it had no effect. Which is kind of hilarious. Okay, I'm not confused anymore, so I should be able to do decent damage now. Except, the second I get unconfused, I get confused again. Well, I have plenty of Sonic Booms left, so... One more Sonic Boom and this thing is dead and it'll be kind of hilarious. I do Spark, but I don't think it'll be able to kill it. Yeah, I figured that was coming. Um, I already sent up my Dratini. Let's go for Aerodactyl. Ice Fang is not going to do anything. Bite, Thunder Fang, Agility. I'll go with Bite. Wow. <laughs> that works. <laughs> well, Twister's absolutely useless, so let's get rid of that. Yep. That happened. And what did... Wow. I don't know why, but I find that yellow bosses seem to drop more than red bosses. On average. And I got a choice scarf, which... Is a really handy little tool I'm going to be equipping on someone. Uh, who here has special attacks that isn't fainted? Well, I can always check my moves. Okay, I... Don't know if Dragon is special or normal, or uh, just regular attack. I think it might be just regular. I could be wrong on that, though. Who knows? I think it might count for both. So what we have here, we have, well, two special types, I guess. Well, actually three, because I think Darkness is technically special. You're dead, so I don't care. Put Fire Fang and Ember. So, you know what? I think I will throw my choice scarf on Aerodactyl. Now, here's to me being able to take out this Magmar and knuckle up a little bit. Maybe. The reason I switched to Charmeleon is because Dragon Rage, which is basically pretty overpowered in every situation. Is that another boss? Wow. I'm getting really lucky with bosses. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to take this one out just because it's a boss Geodude. And I've lost my ability to Thunder Wave stuff. I'm going to go for it though. Okay, I'm not going to be able to get hit by ground type moves of this at least. And I should be able to Ice Fang it really hard. So, I'm immune to Magnitude, which is probably one of his strongest moves. He's frozen solid, which I think is like a 10% chance or less of Ice-type moves, which basically means I win. As silly as that sounds, I've basically won. Yeah, he's done. There's no way I'm going to have a room for wherever the hell this is. Are you serious? An experience share? Yeah. I'm getting stupidly lucky with my loot today. I have a moonstone on me. I have a moonstone. Nidal Queen is on the way. That's all I will say. Um, what can I throw out? Um, fuck moon balls. 
Fuck nest balls. I don't think they're glitches in the game anymore. And I just need to pick up the experience share. Um, 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 um. Um. Come on, keep the glowstone. Or kind of use. I don't need flint. Experience share hype. Just going directly to Dratini. Because yes. Yeah, there's a weird glitch where stuff gets blacked out. Okay, I'm getting stupidly lucky with loot right now, and it's kind of awesome, to be honest. We'll take the repeat ball lid. Okay, please know where boss is till I get home. I have to go through all this stuff now. Well, I didn't make it to where I wanted to make it, but you know what? I've gone just so much stuff now. It doesn't even matter. Okay. Not even sure if there are shiny magmars implemented. Because they do have a shiny version of every Pokemon, just some of them don't have skins yet, so they'll show up as, like, really stupid-looking white blobs that say no texture. And some of the ones that do have skins have shiny skins that look almost exactly like their normal skins. And I'm not sure if that's also a bug or if that's just them being lazy. Either way, there's my forest. So let's go back there, and let's always train this desert from now on, because boss Pokemon... Or do I want to take on the Sand Slash first? Should I go for it? Going for it. There we go. Damn. I've had this cold for a while. I don't know why. Yeah, this, this thing knows nothing that could really hurt me. Ice Fang, I'm glad, is at least doing something. Slowly but surely. No, I guess I don't even need to throw my Dratini out anymore, but... Wow, it died. Ugh. Why that sneeze again? <laughs> Actually, wait a second. But hey, Dratini got experienced twice. So, because I did a swap out... And I have the experience share, I can actually abuse the fuck out of the game. And double my experience yield. Good to know. Because Dratinis are actually a little bit slower to level, because they're... You know... <laughs> okay, seriously, they stop sneezing. But, you know, they're kind of dragon types, and they're always a little bit slower to level. Because of that. At least I find. Whatever, we should be fully healed now. And we need to go sort through stuff. First things first, I need to build a chest. <sighs> seriously? If you another sneeze coming on, like, seriously, I sneezed, like, more in, like, the last three minutes than I did for the last 24 hours. I don't know why. Hey, <laughs> Okay, seriously. That's like five. That's like at least one more time than like all of yesterday. Okay, I need a shift click again now. Hyper Beam, Thunder, Dig, Horn Claws, Payback. I have a Max Elixir, which I'm. I have a Power Bracer. Okay. Now we're in for serious trading time. I'm, I'm getting the good stuff now. If you don't know what I mean by that, you will know eventually. I'm just going to start organizing these so there. TMs are all on the top. I'll sort them properly eventually, but whatever. For now, let's just stick stuff up here. Let's see, double team retaliate, hyper beam. Yeah, I've got some pretty good moves. Most of the white ones tend to be useless, as you can tell, protect, work up, retaliate, double team. And then there's Hyper Beam, which is the only useful one out of them. I also have this Moonstone here, which I will be using, like, immediately. Pretty much. Just let me throw this in here. Net balls. Should probably smelt this gold while I think of it. And I'll also turn these into buttons. 
Okay, that takes care of that. And now just to smelt this in the gold. Okay, I need some of this, and we're good. Still have some leafstone shards. I've got to get more of those if I want to get stuff evolving, but... Because I do now have this moonstone, I could very easily work on my next evolution that I want to get. Which I've not decided if I'm actually going to use this as a Pokemon or not. I kind of really want to though. But come out near the arena. You are now Nidal Queen. Yep. Not so the stones work. How are your stats anyway? Your ordinary growth and... Growth really doesn't mean anything. Like as far as stats go. Nature is mild which is different from the Nidal Queen I have in my air profile. Can't really tell how good her stats are going to be right now. Because she's still below like level 30. Once she gets to like around like level 30 or 40, I'll be able to use that as a good comparison point for my area one. Well, 40 anyways, a good comparison point. For now, I've got a level 16 Nidal Queen. Which is actually better to get Nidal Queen at a lower level. And if you want to know why, well... Quite literally, the only reason why it's better to get Nidal Queen at low levels is... Straight up because it's just better. <laughs> because she'll learn better moves, more or less. At least I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Because I'm pretty sure if you wait on Nidal Queen, then you lose out on some pretty decent moves. I think Nidal Queen can learn Body Slam at a fairly low level, which is a pretty decent move. Now, before I decide who to give this Power Bracer to, I'm going to go check stats. Okay, your attack's already 63, which is pretty good. Jolly nature, your speed needs work. Holy crap. Yeah, like the air trap which I got had hasty nature and it had shit for stats, but like stupidly good speed. So that it really depends on what you get, I guess, when it comes to stats. I I'm sure it'll get like better once I evolve it too, so. But for right now its attack is stupidly good. Dratini's got pretty good attack right now. Like, not the greatest, but you know what? It'll do. Aerodactyl is also a stupidly good attack. War Turtle can actually use more special than attack, but whatever. Charmeleon, in all honesty, probably... Well, I actually spawned with a small Squirtle. Whatever. By the way, I tend to find small ones anyway, but... I didn't think it was possible to spawn with small Pokemon. I thought like it was always going to be like ordinary or like on larger, and I actually never had a starter have a small disposition right off the bat, which is eh, it's all right. It's not a huge deal. I'd prefer it if it was larger. I just got lucky with this Charmander. It happens to be huge growth, which means I have a giant ass Charizard, which is kind of awesome. This attack could use some raising though. We'll see how I feel about that, though. Okay, Bang Light's gonna be all special anyway. Huh. I think I'm just gonna give this a Charmeleon for now, just to boost his attack a little. Because Charmeleon is my fastest Pokemon anyway. And the way the bracers in that work, <clears throat> like the power items, is that they cut your Pokemon speed in half during battles, but... They give him extra stat points for certain stats after battle. Which doesn't really mean anything until you realize that on the level up screen it'll say you got like plus free an attack. Which is actually probably within the range of normal. But instead of just getting plus free you end up with like plus 6 or plus 7 because over those few Pokemon battles you've actually been leveling up your stats without actually leveling up your Pokemon. In other words, they're basically used for grinding your Pokemon to stupidly good stats. Which is why I'm kind of happy I got it before I got into the 50s in level. Okay, I think it's that desert over there, actually, that jungle's on. Whatever. If I made a mistake, I made a mistake. Who cares? Yeah, it's definitely over here because I remember crossing this before. But that our desert, man, that our desert had, like, all the bosses. That was just pure luck, by the way. Not only did I find, like, free boss Pokemon, but, like, they dropped so much good stuff, it's not even funny. Really isn't even funny. 
I believe I gave my choice scarf to Aerodactyl because I can't really remember why actually. I actually don't even remember what choice scarf does. Let's see, choice specs or special attack. There's three choice items. Choice specs, choice scarf, and choice something else. Bandana. I'm pretty sure the bandana is for attack, and I think the scarf is for speed. In other words, the choice scarf boosts my speed by 50%. As do all the other choice items. Would be nice to get some choice specs so I can get like stupidly good special on my Aerodactyl too, but what I have for now is definitely more than fine. Okay, we have some Diglets, the trios. And I need to go find stuff that's not gonna kick my ass. Even though I know I can take the stuff out, I'd rather not risk it right now. Let's see if we can get a dragon there before this episode's done. That's basically what we're doing right now. Swap out to Trap Inch, why not? You need to level up. Bulldoze it. Okay, yeah, I think that's a lot of damage. Let's just continue swapping out till I find something that's not going to die to this. You win no fan attack. What a sack of crap. Thunderfang. Thunderfang again. Wow. Ancient power. I'm very tempted, but ancient power is one of the stupidest moves ever because it only has 60 power and you can only use it five times. It would make way more sense, in all honesty, if they increased the PP to 10, or if they increased the power to like 100. Then I can understand that. But like, as of right now, I really don't understand why it's got so little PP. Well, no, I'll replace the jelly since I've got the choice scarf now, so it's not really going to matter. But whatever. There's the jungle I was thinking of. So, basic rule here is if I find a Mew, I attempt capture immediately with Master Ball. And how do you guarantee a capture from Master Ball? Well, because I'm still not sure if the ball breaking physics are applied to that Master Ball or not. The one way to make sure Pokeballs cannot break is to just use them in battle. Because they never break in battle. The whole reason I'm worried about my Master Ball breaking if I just threw it randomly is because there's no Master Ball lid in this mod, to my knowledge. Which means if it breaks, I'm only going to get a base and a button. Which means I'm going to be spawning myself in there a Master Ball because that's bullshit. But that only happens if you actually throw the Pokeballs manually, and I think it's like a 1 in 10 chance. Or something stupid. It's kind of hilarious when it does happen, though. Unless it happens with a Master Ball, which I don't think it can happen with a Master Ball, but I'm not risking it. But yeah, let's just go and uh, see if we can capture any jungle Pokemon. Why jungle Pokemon? Because, well, they're jungle Pokemon. Should be able to find a Scyther or something. They spawn in here. Or a Pinscher. Or wherever the hell they are. I don't really care if I'm pronouncing names wrong. That's why I call them. Let's see. Jump across here. And that game is lagging. But it's fine. Okay. I see, like, nothing. Even this giant lake, which is normally where I find a ton of Dratini because well jungles have such a low spawn rate that when you get like well it's because of all the leaves on the ground that stuff spawns more rarely but when you get to like big open bodies of water like this you're actually more likely to find like them just filled with water type Pokemon because of like such like all the spawn rates being super low because of the leaves everywhere some kid in the bush here I'm really not having any luck right now. Kind of unfortunate, but whatever. Maybe I'll get a Venom that if I can find it. I know there's a Venom off over there, but I don't like to catch evolved forms because I still have to catch their pre-evolution. 
If I head up here, maybe I'll find something decent. I seriously, like I said before, I, I'm seriously doubting I'm ever going to find a Mew. Because I already found one once, and I was out just pure dumb luck. So I seriously am going to get that lucky ever again. You would poison me. I'll just aqua tail you till you die, hopefully. Water pulse. Yep. Big empty stone area. That's great. I'm not even sure if any Pokemon jungles can spawn on stone. I really don't know. I'm not even sure what block Mew spawns on. I've got to assume it's grass blocks, but... I'm pretty sure the only Pokemon that can spawn on stone blocks are like Zubats, Golbats, and Geodudes. And Grapplers. Those are the four, to my knowledge, that I know for sure will spawn on stone. I don't think any Europe but one will. Maybe an Onyx will, but I think the only reason you never see Onyx in caves is because they're too damn big to play in caves. Bell sprouts. Um, who should I send out? Magnemite's my best bet. Start with the Thunder Wave. Now, do I use Sonic Boom? Go for it. Well, Pokeball time. Magnemite. And we should be good. It's a bell sprout. It shouldn't be that hard to catch. Magnemite. They're not like super uncommon or anything. Okay, so we have a bell sprout now. We can also find Oddishes in here, but I believe Oddishes by nature like to run away from you. Kind of like half the Eevees do. But the difference is all issues are small and they're also the same color as a lot of this jungle. Which is going to make them a pain in the ass to find, of course. But yeah. I don't really see anything right now. If you thought stuff was hard to find in forests, jungles are just terrible to find stuff in. Unless you basically go through in creative mode and clear out all these bottom leaves, which takes forever, even in creative. Like, you'd honestly need world edit or something to, like, clear out the bottom half of jungles. Time, time. Oh, there's a magic carp over here. Time. Huh. Time. 